And now we're going to talk a little bit more about what makes the sun tick, so to speak, or better yet, what allows the sun to produce this enormous amount of energy. Remember, in the previous video, we said that the energy output of the sun, and maybe we can write it like that, which is really the luminosity, is equal to 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts, which in essence is the same amount of power that you would get from 1 million million trillion, so one million trillion power plants. I don't know how to write that number, one million trillion power plants in such a way that you can get uh, the real appreciation of how much energy that really is. Can you imagine one million trillion power plants on the earth would, would be required, of course, there'd be no room for that many power plants to put out the same amount of energy as the sun. And for a long time, when people began to realize, people who studied physics and astronomy began to realize how much power the sun put out, they had no idea how the sun did that because we did not have yet an understanding of nuclear power. So now we know that basically the sun is a big nuclear furnace that's continuously fusing hydrogen into helium, but we didn't know that before. So what is that? What is nuclear fusion? Well, let's talk about the sun a little bit more. So the sun has what we would call a core. The core of the sun, and the reason why we call that the core is that because that's the region in the sun where it's hot enough for nuclear fusion to take place. The temperature at the core, at the edge of the core, is anywhere from 10 million at the edge to about 15 million degrees Kelvin, so 10 to 15 million Kelvin in the core. That's an enormous temperature, and that high temperature is required in order for nuclear fusion to take place at the core. So the region in the sun, called the core, where it's hot enough for nuclear fusion to take place, the radius of that region is about 25% of the total radius of the sun, about 175,000 kilometers. But again, if you compare that to the Earth, being about 12,000 kilometers across, you can see that the core of the sun is huge in comparison to the Earth. In that region, which has a volume about 2 to 3% of the entire sun, so even though it's fairly small compared to the rest of the sun, it produces all of the energy the sun produces. It does that through nuclear fusion. And what nuclear fusion is, it's really the recombination of smaller atoms bunched together into and making larger atoms for it. So in simplicity, if you take a bunch of hydrogen atoms, and basically a hydrogen atom is simply just a proton because the electrons are stripped away from the protons. So normally a hydrogen atom is a proton and a single electron. Electrons stripped away, you basically have four protons, which can be considered four hydrogen atoms. And they're slammed together. And why are they slammed together? Because it's so hot at the core that they move so fast that they actually bounce into each other. And at that point, they will actually begin to fuse. The nuclear strong force will then hold them together and they will fuse slowly over time through a process we'll, we'll discuss in more detail later. It's called the proton-proton chain. But through that process, they slam together and eventually form what we would call a helium nucleus, where the helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. I said, well, wait a minute. If you're slamming four protons together, how do you end up with two protons and two neutrons? Well, it turns out those neutrons will actually convert them, those protons will actually convert themselves to neutrons and form what we call a helium nucleus. Two protons and two neutrons together is basically the core or the nucleus of a helium atom. So what the sun is really doing is, is converting hydrogen into helium. Now, you say, well, how does that provide all that energy? Well, it turns out when that happens, if you were to measure the mass of four hydrogen atoms and compare that to the mass of one helium nucleus, there's actually less mass here than there's there. This is what we call the mass defect or a mass loss. So let's write that down. So mass is lost, mass loss, mostly called the mass defect. And what happens then is the sun then converts mass to energy. Now, of course, most of us know that very famous equation that Einstein came up with, where he realized there was a relationship between matter and energy, that mass can actually turn into energy, and the energy can actually turn into mass. And what the sun does, it takes mass and actually converts it into energy. And so the equation E equals mc squared is that very famous equation from Einstein that now explains what the sun does. It physically takes mass and converts it to energy by fusing hydrogen into helium. Now, how much mass is being converted? Well, it turns out that every second of every day, 
660 billion kilograms, that's well over a trillion pounds of hydrogen, is converted to helium every single second. Let's write that number down. 660 billion kilograms, which is over a trillion, a trillion pounds, so basically 660 million tons of hydrogen is converted to helium every single second at the center of the sun. And the sun will do that for almost 10 billion years before all the hydrogen in the nucleus is converted or in the core is converted into helium. Now, that doesn't show how much mass is lost because only, only a small percentage of the mass of these protons is actually converted to energy when helium is provided. It turns out that the mass loss or the mass defect is about two-thirds of one percent of the mass of the protons. So whatever the mass of the protons is, when they're converted into a helium nucleus, about two-thirds of a percent, roughly, about two-thirds of one percent of the mass of the mass is lost. Now, if you convert that into pounds or kilograms, that's about four, a little over four billion kilograms or about nine billion pounds every second of every day of a time span that almost looks like eternity, the sun converts nine billion pounds of mass, mass, into energy. And that's the energy that we see every day when we look at the sun. The enormous amount of energy that the sun puts out is simply a conversion for mass energy at the tune of about 4.4 billion or 4.3 billion kilograms, 4.3 billion kilograms, which is about 9 billion pounds. Can't spell billion anymore, the billion LBS is pounds. About 9 billion pounds every second is converted from mass to energy on the sun. Now, that requires a very special thing. Because in order to bring protons together, wow, something very special has to happen because protons do not like to be close together. The problem with protons is that they're positively charged and they repel each other through enormous repulsive forces. And it actually takes about, hmm, let's see, about nine pounds of force to take two protons, however small they are, and push them together. Protons have such an enormous repulsive force between them that they're not likely to be put together. So in order to be able to fuse them together like this. So in order to accomplish that, it gets so hot at the center of the sun that the protons begin to move so far, fast that when they're on a collision course towards each other, before the repulsive forces can stop them and send them back in the opposite direction, they're, they're moving so fast that they can overcome the repulsive forces, get close enough together for the nuclear strong force to grab them and push them together and slowly combine them step by step into a helium nucleus. And I'll show you later how that proton-proton uh, process works. But that's, in essence, what's happened. And for those protons to be moving fast enough, the temperature at the core must be at least 10 million degrees. We've calculated that the minimum temperature required at the core of the sun is 10 million degrees. Otherwise, those protons would not be moving fast enough so they could fuse together. They simply would hmm, bounce off each other, not really bounce off each other, but the electrical force would just push them in the other direction before they get close enough to fuse. And that's how the sun produces the energy through that nuclear fusion process by taking protons and converting them into helium in the process converting 9 billion pounds of mass into energy. And that's the secret of the sun. That's how it produces all that energy. Quite something.